what kind of uh, quality do Yale or say School of Management love in Chinese students? And what we're looking for, I think, is is a match between students' aspirations and the capabilities of of the school. What's your personal view on online courses' future? I think both will survive. Yale大学在全球范围内设立的首个中心 优质教育资源如何共享，借助网络，十年前还显得新奇不已的远程可视教学，已经变成了教育界的新常态。哈佛、耶鲁的网络公开课更是吸引了全球数以千万计的学生，吸引了课程、颠覆性的学术理念、名
Yale and other institutions that connect relatively small groups of students together. So I think there are many ways that we can go with technology, but I, I think that the MOOCs are not a real threat or contrary to what an institution like Yale does or mm -hmm. Fudan does. Then the question is whether we'll, they will survive in the long run. Yeah, I think both will survive. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the reason why I think that, um, especially for business schools, mm -hmm. um, we need to think of new ways to use technology. Mm -hmm. What enterprises really want, for example, are students who can come out of school and say, you know, I've learned how to work with people all around the world, mm -hmm. across time zones, across cultures. I've been able to do this face-to-face. -face. I've also been able to do this using technology. We know that uh, Chinese alumni recently uh, donated a lot. Um, there is the uh, Chinese property couple. Um, the female is from, uh, I think, Cambridge um, educated, um, donating to Harvard. And to my understanding, uh, they are also negotiating with other Ivy schools, including Yale, for further donation. And there is also the yes. Hong Kong billionaire, um, Ronnie Chen, who donated a huge amount to Harvard. Um, why is um, these Chinese people mainly donating to U.S. schools, not made in China schools? So I think there's there are two answers to that. One is, why give money to education? Mm -hmm. And then the second part is, why give money to U.S. institutions? And one of the things that has been striking to me is that the, the Chinese people share uh, with, with people in the U.S. a tremendous commitment to education. Mm -hmm. uh, w when I first started coming to China in the 1990s, I would meet middle managers mm -hmm. of state-owned enterprises. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, when we would relax and uh, talk and chat, uh, I would learn about what they were doing, and they were spending, or saving rather, half of their income to send their child mm -hmm. to school. Yeah, that's this, right. this tremendous commitment to education. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why so many of the successful Chinese give money to education, mm -hmm. which is very unusual from a U.S. perspective because a lot of our non-U.S. alumni mm -hmm. don't have that commitment that the Chinese alumni do. Mm -hmm. It's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think it's something about the Chinese mm -hmm. commitment to education. The, the, the second thing is why give money differentially to U.S.? And my, my sense is that will change. That, uh, and it is changing. But uh, some of the Chinese alumni from the U.S. institutions do feel a great deal of gratitude to Harvard or Stanford or whatever institution. Mm -hmm. But I also think that uh, the, you'll see, given the high quality of institutions here, mm -hmm. more and more donations to uh, Renmin, Tsinghua, Beida, Fudan, Shanghai, Xiaotong, etc. Mm -hmm. And indeed, those, those institutions are so great they will uh, gain as well. So China is currently reforming its uh, national uh, college enrollment examination system. Um, what kind of uh, quality do Yale or say School of Management love in Chinese students, either high school graduates and MBA candidates? So. By the way, across Yale mm -hmm. uh, University, even though we're relatively small, mm -hmm. across the whole university we have about 500 students from China coming. And within the School of Management, uh, we attract a lot of wonderful students from China. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking for, I think, is, is a match between uh, students' aspirations and the capabilities of, of the school. Mm -hmm. And probably uh, what, what I personally am looking for are people who think about leadership, 
and the need to uh, understand competition, understand organizations. That's what, what we teach, that, that is essential for leadership, but also develop an understanding of how to listen, how to leverage, how to, how to every once in a while look up from the organization chart or the spreadsheet mm -hmm. and connect with people around the world and understand what are the great opportunities, what are the big issues, what are the big risks. Any brief thoughts you want to add on high school graduates because they may not know or their parents may not know um, themselves that well compared to the MBA candidates? Well, that's a fascinating uh, situation. Um, Yale is expanding the residential colleges uh, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore uh, we'll have some more spots at uh, Yale. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing for, for college students is to, again, find the right match. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's a, oftentimes it's an anxious time for students, mm -hmm. but uh, visit. Uh, there are so many great institutions around the world. Uh, and uh, I, I did not go to an Ivy League college. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's all, oftentimes the case that sometimes people feel disappointed if they don't get into Harvard or Yale or Stanford or Princeton or Columbia. Mm -hmm. But um, you'll find a match. There, yeah. you know, and and uh, focus on uh, on the learning process. 教育体制改革牵一发而动全身，是长久以来争论最激烈的改革领域之一。它关乎下一代的人才储备和培养，以及民族的未来。随着2014年中国高考改革方案出台，教改再迎新契机。In the many trips you come into China, what is your impression of the progress of the Chinese education system and universities um, overall? Over the years, well, I visited Tsinghua in 1993, um, and I've gotten to know Chinese universities, but I'm far from an expert. Mm -hmm. My impression is that uh, they have among the best students in the world. Um, w the students whom we attract mm -hmm. from the top universities in China to come to our MBA program or to come to our Masters of Advanced Management program mm -hmm. are phenomenal. They are smart, they are committed, they are well trained, mm -hmm. they are exactly the profile that I described earlier. Mm -hmm. People who uh, are rigorous about understanding the world, what's common, what's different. It's amazing how fast the speed with which they piece things together. You mentioned this, uh, Chinese students, top students' quality are very good, but are they as creative or as free-thinking as their um, U.S. peers? Uh, maybe not, uh, and I, I think that's a good point. And uh, what, what we are trying to do with, for example, our, our Masters of Advanced Management, excuse me, Masters of Advanced Management program, mm -hmm. we're trying to encourage students to think about leadership. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a program that brings in people from all different sectors. Mm -hmm. And it's not the traditional faculty lecturing to students. Mm -hmm. And it's much more a case where uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Bach, raises their sights gets them to think broadly. Mm -hmm. And the guests, the senior executives, uh, reinforce that. And I think that's the kind of eye-opening, mm -hmm. uh, aspiration level, increasing activity that, that I think benefits the, the, the students, not only from China, but elsewhere where maybe the education system has been uh, more mechanical. Ranking is kind of an integral part of universities. Uh, more so with business schools. There is recently, just uh, earlier this month, the Economist ranking of MBAs coming out. Uh, on your personal webpage, you also have a few thoughts on this. So what would you say to hopeful MBAs um, for their attitudes toward these rankings? Well, I think the rankings are important, and, and here's why they're important. Mm -hmm. uh, conditional on who you are, what you've learned, what the school is, what the alumni network is. 
the rankings influence your opportunity set. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're important. And a school that has good rankings can help you. Yes. And that's, that's a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you also have to anticipate where the school will be in the future because the rankings change. Yeah. So one of the things that we're working on at, at Yale is everybody knows Yale is a great university. The business school rankings we expect are going up. But it's tough competition. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some really uh, wonderful schools out there. Uh, there's 13,000 business schools in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to put it all into perspective. I think if, yeah. you, can, if you can get into a good school, um, you should be aware of the fact that not every school is going to be ranked in the top 20 in all the rankings. So. Rankings are important, but you also have to remember the importance of your own network, mm -hmm. your own value add, the potential contribution you can make, and what I call your own narrative. Who you are, what your background is, what you've learned, where you're going to go. Mm -hmm. The students should not be paranoid about this ranking, perhaps. Uh, paranoid's a good word to uh, be, be careful about. You can be a little bit too paranoid. I've mm -hmm. been in situations where uh, the rankings go up and students are, are unbelievably joyful <laughs> and I've been in situations where the rankings go down and the students are devastated. Yeah. And uh, probably the extreme reactions there should be avoided. Schneider 教授给我们的分享有很多都颇有意思。他对于中国顶级高校学生的质量颇为赞许，但是认为中国学生创造力不足，可能还是由于教育体系过于机械化的原因。那我们预祝耶鲁北京中心能够举办更多更有意思的活动，也希望更多人能被吸引到这一有意义的双向交流中。